CC was initially uh, owned by Hydeal, which is a company in France. Since I think uh, it was uh, as SAP acquired CC in 2007, and since then it is SAP Convergent Charging. But for Convergent Mediation, it is still Digital Route, which owns CM. It has not uh, SAP hasn't acquired it. It just partners with C uh, partners with Digital Route as and when uh, you need a CM to be integrated with uh, S4. Okay, but this mediation seems to be important for certain type of industries where you need to collect right. records. You see, yeah. correct, absolutely, that's necessary. Right. But let's say, if, let's say you have your even even different uh, other network streams, right? Uh, or your mm -hmm. network events uh, or your network engine, they can also be integrated with S4. But then there'll be mm -hmm. an additional cost in terms of how you do that integration. There'll be like additional cost of like that integration, whether it's possible or not, whether how many enhancements, how many RISEFs are needed. But since CM is uh, uh, CM is standard integration with S4, CM can mm -hmm. integrate with that particular. Uh, so what CM does is CM integrates with that network engine, gets the data, uh, enriches it, uh, puts it in a readable format and then it sends it to S4 for consumption. And so just give you an overview on SOM. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So subscription order management, it's this highlighted area. And what are the key capabilities? So you have master data creation and replication. Uh, so SOM re replicates the product, which is your service to CC and CI and a business partner mm -hmm. replication from SOM to CI. You can also do the uh, so if you see in this case, the business partner replication does not happen from SOM to CC, but in case of uh, that will only happen when the when your uh, contract flows from CC to from SOM to CC. But mm. in case of it is S4, SOM and CI both are in S4, you can do the replication from SOM to CI. And okay. there is an order order distribution framework. So this basically is something these are different steps or different, uh, uh, what should I say, st uh, steps which basically replicate your contract from SOM to CC to CI. Okay, so let's say in this case, there is one step which replicates your uh, product from C SAP C order management to CC. There is one particular mm -hmm. step which activates your contract inside CC. Then there is one particular step which actually uh, distributes your contract from CC to CI. So all this and there is another one contract step and another ODI step which actually activates your contract inside F SAP CI. So that is mm -hmm out of the box order distribution framework. So there is a framework and you can also modify this framework. So let's say in case CC is not needed. So you can just make that particular one particular step of replicating replication to CC activation of provider contract in CC as inactive. So what will happen is that when when your contract gets when your uh, contract flows from CC to from uh, SOM to CI, those steps which are there for CI will not get uh, uh, activated. So it will since it's an inactive state, uh, it will straight away go from SOM to CI. It won't go to CC. Oh. You can play around with that. Yeah. So there are different steps. We'll come to that. Uh, okay. com product modeling is something. Let's say you have different. Uh, you want to model your product, right? As in, you can have mm -hmm. different uh, characteristics and parameters. Let's say if, if I'm telecom industry, I want to have like, uh, or let's say if I'm uh, Amazon, right? I want to give a SaaS mm -hmm. product to a particular uh, consumer. So I want to. I want. I have different tiers. Let's say. I uh, based on based on that my pricing comes into valid comes into picture. But let's say I have tier one, tier two, and it can go into multiple cases, right? Then again, I might have a customer uh, type. Let's say if I'm a premium customer, if I'm a regular customer, I'm a diamond mm -hmm. customer, etc. So you can product. You can model your product in such a way that when that product is used in an order, you can just drop mm -hmm. down and you can select those particular characteristics. So you don't have to enter or anything. You can model your product in such a way that you can. It's easier for or for the end user to choose yeah. and set different characteristics or parameters at, and it can happen during at runtime also. Mm -hmm. It just happens on the go. You don't need to like go in a different screen or do something. You can uh, you can model your product inside that cross catalog mapping. Uh, I'll come to that. It's quite technical but the terminology is technical but what happens is you can link your product inside uh, SOM to a charge plan inside CC. I'll show you that uh, in the next mm -hmm. sessions uh, which is important in case you have CC into play and out okay. of the box contract change processes. Okay, you have upsell, downsell, uh, extension, cancellation, etc. Then mm -hmm. from CC, okay. from CC perspective, what you can do is uh, so the key capabilities for CC is this is basically optimized for high volume transaction, high transaction volume, and it calculates your prices and charges for thousands of transactions per second. So it can it has it has a really good transaction capability, and since it's Java based, it can actually do a lot of calculation within uh, within within a second. So you have rating mm -hmm. for one time, recurring, and usage based charges. It supports prepaid, postpaid, and hybrid charging. So let's say if you have multiple 
pricing modules you have flat rate tiered and effectively date based so if you see here that is what i was mentioning like it can uh, i was i mentioned earlier that it can take into account and do the pricing when it's custom when it's quite complex so you have mm -hmm. flat rates if you have tiered if you have effective uh, let's in on a particular date i want to consume this on another date i want to consume this so based on that particular schedule you can actually write your logic inside cc and then that mm -hmm. can uh, be used to generate that particular amount as an output so mm -hmm. whenever there's says custom level or a lot of proration involved you can use uh, cc counters again it's something which is uh, internal to cc i'll come back to it web services is how cc integrates with som and ci uh, so i'll show you mm -hmm. that also how that's done next we move to ci so what are the key capabilities of ci so if one, first of mm -hmm. all is billing so you have aggregation and grouping of billable data so you have uh, as part of invoicing you can have invoice preview consolidated invoicing using billing data from multiple sources discounting etc threshold definition mm -hmm. for auto posting usage uh, you can have raw usage data storage so cc ci can actually store that consumption data which is flowing from cm to c cm can either send it to cm and cm can also send that data to cc also okay but what happens is if cm sends the data to cc cc and cc does not have a particular database hosted of within s4 you won't see that record within cc okay so what will mm -hmm. happen is cc will straight away generate that output let's say cm sends an in uh, a particular data record or consumption of 10 let's say i am uh, let's say from a telecom perspective i just said 10 kb of data will, was used okay so mm -hmm. if that if that data flows from cm to cc so what cc does is cc will calculate it internally using that logic and it will generate that amount right let's say 10 kb of data for this my mm -hmm. amount is 0.1 so I'll, I'll generate 0.1 or let's say one dollar but what happens is but there's the there's no record of that 10 kilobyte consumption data which came in you what you get mm -hmm. into s4 is straight away that one dollar of uh, output or the amount the bit which gets created but inside right. C C right. ci if cm sends that data to ci what happens is ci will store that usage data within itself so in, in yeah. case you want to reconcile let's say you want to reconcile that one dollar to this particular 10 kb of uh, usage data you can always do mm -hmm. that so there's a reconciliation okay. ci will hold this consumption data record also and ci will also yeah. hold the output also so if you see here that's what this data usage data storage is there and you have Next months to date usage visibility and duplicate yeah. usage data identification ci mm -hmm. has uh, you can also reverse and read it so let's say in case you have let's say you generated a bit or an amount and then uh, or you and also you invoice the customer but then you saw that after a month that this particular price was incorrect so what you can do is you can cancel the invoice reverse your billing doc and you can re-rate that bit after making that change inside the price so what ci mm -hmm. does is ci will automatically generate the generate the bit with the new amount okay mm -hmm. and that is what reversal and re-rating is integration is you can integrate with external tax engines and external payment gateways and revenue mm -hmm. share in partner settlement next is fica uh, so this is off comes into play after convergent invoicing and you can have like revenue realization from your billing to your general ledger also fast automated and accurate payment handling differentiates yeah. collections yeah. based on customer credit risk profile just a uh, comparison between CI and FICA. So if you see the application component, it's a sub ledger for uh, CI FICA, which is contract accounts receivable and payable is a sub ledger application. It mm -hmm. offers enhanced functionalities. So for example, for a general ledger information and FICA provides the functionality which enables processes for industries with. So you have large volume of documents to process and large volume of business partners. And what is CI? CI is basically a sub component of FICA, it, which creates the invoices for customers that calculate the overview of all the charges provided across different services. CI is the model which provides functionality which enables custom and sub consumption and subscription based billing. So mm -hmm. why is FICA preferred over FIAR? In the FIAR module, what happens is that a customer can only be linked to one receivable account, one reconciliation mm -hmm. account. But in FICA, you, you see that it has the provide pro provides the flexibility to link multiple receivable accounts with one customer based on whatever transaction is posted. So at the line level? Yeah, at the line level, yeah. Okay, that's interesting because normally when you have an invoice coming out of the regular S4 HANA, right? Uh, the whole invoice gets posted to one recon account, but uh, you don't have flexibility to like, if there are multiple line items in that invoice, mm -hmm. you, don't, you cannot say that this line goes to this recon account and that line goes to a different one. You cannot do that. Yeah, because this also makes sense because it coming, could be each line could be coming from a different system as different well. Different source. Correct. Different Absolutely. source as well. Also could be either related to product or service or some sort of a hybrid thing also. And you may want some flexibility in terms of 
where it goes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Next is CM. So CM's uh, since CM is a third party tool, I won't go into this particular uh, lot of technicalities. But if you see here, this is where mediation comes into play. Part five. If you see here, it has lots of uh, it's integrated with Brim. So you have your network events, devices, logs, and that can uh, that can integrate with CM what mid mediation what are the different capabilities so you have mm -hmm. data infrastructure short in time to market you can have enrichment which is what we discussed earlier mm -hmm. you can have quick adaptation new business requirements record ensures records are not lost duplicated or corrupted reduces revenue yeah. leakage and enrichment alarm any event management or your which basically sends your alerts to your consumer or your customer based on uh, the threshold value in case you have any threshold okay Okay, so that was it for today. Uh, 